All right, a very good afternoon to all of us who are here as well as live for our China Myth Debunk Through the Lenses of Four Young ASEAN Startups. And of course, on behalf of the committee behind, my name is Benjamin Lowe, and on behalf of the committee, I want to give a very, very warm, rousing welcome to all of you who have taken your precious Monday lunchtime to join us. Now, today is uh, the last of our four lunchtime clinics where we have painfully and painstakingly organized, where we brought in our past year's winners to share with you their journeys, their entire experiences trying to scale their businesses from the midst of COVID, uh, from knees deep in what we call as, you know, once in a lifetime, challenging pandemic situations to scale to China. Now, you may be wondering, you know, was there a sort of a special knack that they have? Was it because they are a, a bit more uh, determined than the other startups in this region? Or maybe they had a special platform which was pretty much unaware as well as unknown to many, many people. Well, if you're here with us, chances are you've gotten news of this uh, competition. And today, we like to sort of guide and walk you through and hopefully open your eyes as well as lenses to this new opportunity. So once again, allow me to quickly frame up today's lunchtime webinar. It's meant to be short, sharp, sweet, and succinct. And what we're going to do is uh, title the China Myth Debunk, precisely because uh, a lot of us as uh, entrepreneurs and startup founders, you may have certain challenges or myths with regards to growing to China. Today, let's use this opportunity once and for all to deconstruct and break things apart. And of course, through the lenses of the four young ASEAN startups, Travel. In fact, today we have uh, Yen Lo, uh, who is the co-founder and CEO of Travel, and he will be sharing with us his first-hand experiences. How this webinar is going to be run, the first segment is going to be co-hosted and moderated by uh, one of my colleagues. Her name is Ratna, and Ratna will lead Yen in a heart-to-heart -heart talk uh, conversation about his journey scaling his business into China. After that, the talkative me will be coming back to share with you a bit about uh, what it takes. Sorry. After that, our committee chairperson, Caleb, will be sharing with you the opportunity that lies ahead of you in terms of growing your business, your work into China. After Caleb is done, I'll be getting back into the airwaves to share with you uh, what are some of the um, important tips as well as strategies for you to be really, really uh, aware of so that you can have and put your best foot forward growing into China. And of course, at the end of this uh, entire three-part series, there will be a joint Q&A between myself, Yen, as well as Caleb, where I will be fielding any questions that you may have with regards to this competition. I, I just want to do a bit of housekeeping. Uh, you will be housed as well as nested in a Zoom webinar um, kind of platform. So in front of you, you should be able to see a Q&A function and tab please feel free to leave your questions as and when uh, they may transpire. So for example, during the conversation with Yen, if you do have any burning questions that you want to have, uh, Ratna at her discretion could either field it uh, during the, the Q&A session itself, or we can reserve it towards the end. So we love for you to engage with us. We love for you to let us know where you come from. So in fact, we do have a little poll to get things started because Yen is really, really excited. You know, Yen purposefully you know, put up a very, very... Um, handsome gear and outfit just to show you his best. So anyhow, to have a quick sensing of uh, you know, the people who have joined us for this afternoon, you would see the questions popping up right in front of you. So we'd love to know like which best describes you or the state or your current business. Do you, uh, are you coming here because you already have an idea, but you do not know where's the next level at? Or are you at the market validation stage whereby you do have something, but you know, you're still testing it out, trying and testing the waters? Or you have a successful full-fledged business and you're trying to scale it up, take it out of your city, whether you're based in Philippines, Thailand, Singapore, whatsoever, or hmm, no, I'm, I'm not really trying to do any startup at this point, right? And we do have a second question, which is uh, which country are you based in? Just to have a sensing. So if you're based in Indonesia, I'll say uh, Upper Kaba, right? If you're based in Thailand, no, I'll just skip it. All right, so we have, uh, I believe the majority of the people voted if you haven't voted, please uh, put in your responses into the poll, please. And I believe I will be clicking the end poll. All right, people are just like picking up seven out of 18. Okay, so let's have more people to participate because, you know, I really, really want to warm up the entire area so Ratna can take us uh, by the edges of our seats as she always do. All right, so we have roughly about half the people who have already voted. So it seems like, it seems like the majority uh, of you are looking to scale a startup business, you are at the right place. Because uh, today, whether through the conversations or through 
the opportunity that Caleb will be sharing with you. You have excellent uh, opportunities and insights. In fact, a gateway of resources for you to grow your business. Now, whether you decide to do so with us, we of course hope that you do so with us. Uh, you'll definitely get away some valuable knowledge as well as our firsthand uh, kind of paradigm shifts from our founder himself. And the large pool of the people here are based in Singapore, right? So we are enjoying our Monday. Uh, it's pretty sweltering hot outside the last I was outside there. So enough said and done. I'm sharing the results and you should be able to see it right in front of your screen right now. All right. So without further ado, I shall invite Ratna as well as Yen to, of course, turn on their camera to show us the beautiful faces as well as to unmike. So Ratna, are you well and on, ready to take on the show? Yes, thank you so much, Ben. All right, thank you. the show is yours. Thank you. So welcome back to the Lunch Talk series, uh, Debunking the China Myth. And it's really great to see some familiar names here. Some of you have joined us uh, for the past few weeks and some are new as well, so welcome. And if you're joining us today for the first time, as what Ben mentioned earlier, you may be interested in, you know, uh, joining or scaling your business into China, whether you're in your ideation phase, not knowing whether your idea will work for you, or you are mature business having a ready MVP, but you're stuck, not sure how you can scale into a thriving market like China. And what are the platforms, channels, and the right resources to help you get there? And if you think that travel business is dead because of COVID, think again, because today, we are very delighted to have Ian Lo, our past winner who has, who has been phenomenal and successful in terms of expanding his travel startup business from Singapore to China, where the local travel industry is booming there. And he did it within six months after our competition. So let me introduce our guest speaker today. Uh, at the age of five, Chen Liang was already hawk hawking his secondhand toys illegally at a public park, which grew to more mini project in a pursuit to satisfy his thirst for starting a business. As he got exposed to entrepreneurship through the NUS Overseas College Beijing program with Tsinghua, he was both in awe and frightened by the highly competitive market. And he always believed that it would be his turn to try entering the huge Chinese market. And Ian has experience interning in startups, joined a venture capital, done startup consulting, spoke, mentored, and judged at the conferences with experiences spanning around the globe in USA, Israel, China, and Asia. And since 2011, he has been in the business of cultivating the galaxy best young founders. As the co-founder of Reactor, also founded Travel in 2015, a seamless automated gas engagement software as a service platform for the travel business, for the travel industry. And so how will I run these conversations? Basically, I will take about 20 minutes or so to give you an overall perspective and to have an intimate conversation with Yen as he shared his entrepreneurship adventures, the highs, the lows of scaling his business into China, following which I will keep my eye in the Q&A chat to make sure that you take this opportunity to also ask, ask Yen a questions as well. So what do you expect as an outcome? The first one will be inspirations to help you dream bigger. Uh, despite uh, the COVID situation. The second one is the clarity to why you should scale your business into China. And the third one is the support through this whole competition process. All right. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, Yen, how is your weekend been? Um, I actually just took my second jab for my Pfizer vaccine. So if I look a bit like a zombie, it's, it's definitely because of the jab. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Uh, I know sometimes after the jab can be very tiring. So thanks for showing up and, you know, giving us insights and inspirations as well. So, yeah, Yen, uh, share with us, you know, the good work that your company does and what keeps you passionate doing so till today. I know since young that you have always been curious and have this hunger and thirst to start a business. So what is it that drives you? 
Right, I think I think the the hawking illegally my toys since five. I think that's always been like just a joke of the day. But but re- really, I think it, it has always been very exciting for me to create new products, to create new ideas and startups, and and bring ideas to life. Right. So like I think you you very very nicely shared that I started my first company about second year into uni, um, and that company is still growing and thriving. I think Reactor is still doing really well. Um, I stepped away from it, went to venture capital, and now travel has been about five years coming already. Um, so I, I, don't even, I don't even know whether to start up anymore. But I think what motivates me is really, I'm, I've been in the venture capital side, I sit on the other side of the table, and, and it's really about just creating things. You know, when I look at, or even like just give you a best analogy, like sports, right? Like Olympics is happening now. Watching sports doesn't like excite me as much because half the time I'm just thinking like I just want to be there playing it, right? I might not be good at it, but I'd rather be on the field running around with the ball or like you know trying to to surf the the tennis surf. Um, and I think that has always been the case for me. So just wanting to be that the, the forefront of that innovation, you know, starting something new, expanding into new markets, and I think that's where um this competition was was kind of helping in that aspect as well. Ah, interesting. Uh, and and you you share that you 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 kind of like get exposed you know to entrepreneurship through the NUS overseas college Beijing mm. program with Singhua right, and you were in awe and frightened by the highly competitive market, <laughs> but you believed yeah. that you could enter the huge Chinese market. And what were your motivation behind scaling your business into China despite its competitiveness? Right, right. Um, so I, I'm not sure if how many people here. I mean, not not everyone is from Singapore, and not everyone's aware of the NUS um, overseas colleges program. But they have programs all around the world. And I decided that I wanted to go China just because it frightens me. And my Mandarin is really, really poor actually. Um, I I have like now my basic Chinese foundation is all the Beijing Chang because of my exposure there. Um, but I think like there were programs to Silicon Valley, to Bio Valley. To all around the world, right? It could be in Asia, in Japan, or in 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 uh, India even. But I think China China was a market that I felt like without the kind of support, without the kind of like you know experienced people in the field to help us to enter the market, like it scares me to just land myself there. I could go to Silicon Valley, the Bay Area, and just like plant myself there, find an internship, set up my business. I don't think it's that difficult for a lot of us here in Singapore. But China itself is so competitive. There's so many legislation and like you know difficulties in skirting around some of the ways they work because it's so different. Um, I myself am Chinese and I don't speak awesome Chinese. But still, like you know, if if anyone else that was you know less exposed, it could be you know language, it could be um, the way their business culture is. And I think that has been one of the areas that that China itself kind of scares me. You know, it's been competitive. It's so like people are so hungry there. Um, the 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 people that are innovative there are a dime a dozen, right? Everybody there is is very innovative and trying to find new ideas to grow, and I think that has been an area that I felt they needed the most support in, um, in entering the market. Um, so uh, travel itself has already been. Uh, we have presence in Japan. We have presence in Korea. Um, we are actually I'm actually gonna be in Korea, in two weeks time for for a good three months. Um, and and China has been one of those markets that you know when we are setting out our our business. It's just so much more that we need to kind of like look into that that I I feel that the support was was highly necessary. Ah, great. Uh, as you shared, I remember this Tim Ferriss which shared you know the quotes like, "What do you fear the most is <laughs> what you most need to do," and uh, you know you clearly uh showcase this um attitude in your entrepreneurship journey, and I, I'm sure that there are so many. Big challenges, right? That you face, and as you wanted to enter into China, so mm-hmm. um, how did you? Um, what kind of ch- challenges that you face, um, and and how did you overcome them? And if you can connect some thoughts with our competition, that'll be great as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, I think the competition itself is a challenge. <laughs> There are so many great competitors in our batch. Uh, I think some of you have also heard the sharing from like. Bell from Bus AR and and the other teams. Um, I, I know Bell from a, a trip in Chongqing. So we actually went to this uh, Chongqing exploration trip that was funded by the Chongqing government. And even then, when we landed there, you know, we were kind of interacting with the startups and the businesses and the government. It was still gonna be like a huge, like confusion for us as to how to enter the market. 
and and I think um, specifically to the challenge in China um, and and how China ASEAN startup competition really helped was was linking us up to the right people. Um, a, a good shout out to Eddie from Cloud Bay that has been really really behind us and supporting us all the way. I think I shared this in a previous sharing as well, but he possibly could be more you know involved and invested in us being in China than, than we are. He's been chasing my ass on like, hey, you need to go to the Chinese embassy to get this, you know, verified. Hey, you need to do this, you know, you need to do that. And and I've been kind of pushing back some stuff because there were like, you know, paperwork and legal stuff that we need to do on this side as well. So I will always have to, you know, get things chased by him. So I think he's, 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 he's definitely like now like a default member of our travel team. <laughs> and and I think that's are the challenges like that we are facing, right? So I think Chinese is a market. How do we incorporate? How do we get all these you know things in place? How do we enter the market and then find the first customer? So we we have actually got connected through uh, this competition with Cloud Bay, and we are actually doing a pilot um, project with them that will be launched in September this year. So we are putting our technology that we have built here in Singapore into their mobile application, iLearning uh, mobile application that Cloud Bay has been working on. And, and it's a bit like a sync pass of, of, of Nanning. And um, they want to expose travel elements to their to their guests and their customers. And I think that that in itself was a really great um, leap for us in overcoming the challenge and like finding a good use case, a good case study to showcase um, to the rest of, of, of China. Oh, wow, that's really so exciting. I mean, uh, putting your solutions into the iNunning, um, you know, apps, I think that is really a huge milestone as well. Right, and right. I know, and I know. Huh? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the, the iNunning the app itself has like, what, um, 9.5 million active users. I don't think we'll ever get that. We don't even have oh. that kind of size in Singapore. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's in itself, it's, it's amazing. I mean, the reach that we can have in China is, is really quite wide. Mm, yeah, definitely. And I, I'm, I'm going to press you on this as well because I, I'm sure that it was really not easy at all. You know, if there, there was one most difficult point about entering China, right? What would that be? Mm. And how could we prepare ourselves to really enter this highly competitive market? Right, right. Um, I think one is, is really the complexities of setting up, mainly because China is so huge. Um, that there is so many cities, right? So I mentioned we went to Chongqing with um, Bell and uh, Bus AR, and like there obviously the Shanghai and the Beijing are the ones that are most um, um, obvious to the world where you want to land and start up your entity. I think what Nanning really helped us to do was really the, the infrastructure, the the people there, the the giving of of space, uh, allowing us to enter the market with the right you know um, um, clients and customers, opening up the market to us. I think that's something that is really one of the biggest challenges in entering uh, China. And I guess identifying that city that you want to land in um, is also going to be really tough. I mean, if, if you are looking at a, a manufacturing company, obviously Shenzhen will make a more you know suitable place maybe, right? But there are going to be difficulties for you to just drop yourself into Shenzhen and then you know be able to set up your entity there and making sure that everything is running smoothly, you got all your documents and legal in place. Um, and I think that is one of the biggest challenge, which is why we went to Chongqing in middle 2019. So it was in a good year when COVID was still, you know, not here. Um, and we never really started our business there. Like, you know, we never incorporated there. We never, you know, found a customer. We were there for a week or I was there for a week. And like, I was knocking on doors, you know, trying to get meetings with my very valuable, like, barely audible and illegible like Chinese. Um, but I think more than that, like Cloud Bay really just helped us to open the doors. Um, they, they really helped us with the setting up of that entity and then also, you know, opening us up to the market in London. So I think that that in itself is one of the biggest challenge that we faced and then we ha have glad to be overcome with, I think like currently. Okay, mm. great. So Cloud Bay is the the, the the main, the main <laughs> of, uh, door opening right yeah, yeah, all right so yeah i mean um you know for for all the audience maybe we can show yen some love he did so much to get him to clap to where he is today so maybe you can drop him some uh kind of encouragement in the chat <laughs> you know, as we continue to um you know discuss this further all right so yen um 
apart from all those challenges, right? What were some opportunities mm-hmm. that you were you weren't aware of until you finally started working on opportunities in China? For example, you mentioned that you got so much support from Cloud Bay, right? How did that yeah. impact your business and the pace of growth? Right, right. I, I think that's something that when we first joined the, the competition itself or uh, to know about Nanning, we were kind of lacking in that space even because Nanning in, in itself is, is not one of the big cities like Beijing and Shanghai that everybody would have heard of. And I think that opportunity in itself, like just exploring Nanning and um, I guess being there in, in terms of like, you know, understanding the market, understanding the size, I think that was an opportunity in itself that we never kind of thought was possible. I mean, when we joined the, 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 this competition, China ASEAN, startup competition like Nanning wasn't even in our radar before we, we heard of this competition like we weren't even looking at Nanning because if you talk about tourism Beijing and Shanghai is obviously where you know the key is right the, the main tourism hubs are and I think once we kind of got in there we were preparing for the competition we started researching about Nanning and we were like, oh wow that's Guangxi right and and I think COVID has really hit and changed tourism a lot. Uh, and, and obviously the shift from international to domestic tourism is huge now. Um, China is back to, if I'm not mistaken, the last I heard was 120% of their previous occupancies um, as compared to pre-COVID. And why is 120% is because Chinese are just traveling with that domestically now, right? And Guangxi being one of these biggest, uh, bigger hospitality region and tourism uh, attraction, like it, it really an opportunity that we would have never considered or thought about before um, this competition and looking into Nanning. Um, and obviously this 9.5 million active users, right? I mean, even if we just land into China and just set up our own mobile application and people are downloading it, I don't think we'll ever reach 9.5 million eyeballs. Like I wouldn't talk about users, right? Like just people seeing our platform, people seeing our technology, and I guess the credibility in entering China, if you say I am here, I know I'm working with these partners, I'm working with, you know, Cloud Bay, I'm working with, you know, I won this competition. It's really adds a lot of credibility, which I think it's really quite big in uh, China. Like it really is one of the, I mean, we were national TV. Um, I can't even say that for, for, for even being here in Singapore, right? Much less exposed to live audience of, of like millions of people. Yeah, yeah, so true. And yeah, I mean, uh, you, you know, like, uh, I wanted to be a devil as advocate here again. <laughs> and you mentioned all the great things about why the company should scale into China, right? And now, mm-hmm. could you potentially, you know, tell us what should be one reason why people should not grow into China? Wow, uh, there's so many. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as much as China is a great market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I think um, it's definitely a very difficult market to enter um, uh, without any support or without any guidance or, or expertise. Um, even setting up your business, like for us, like it takes, especially with COVID, right? I mean, without COVID, I could fly down, I could set up the business within maybe two or three days uh, at most a week with all my bank accounts in place. But, but here, like now you can't fly down to visit the China's embassy as I'm telling you, um, get all documents certified. I think the entire administrative process it, itself, um, it's very highly complex without any guidance, especially, and, and the, the time that it would take to set up the entity. I think in Singapore, you need like 30 minutes and $30, I think, <laughs> to set up a business entity. Um, and I think in that space, like, I, if you're not planning to go into China, then like, you know, you're either in China or not in China, right? I think that's always the, the use case there. Uh, we have a, a member on the team that speaks fluent Mandarin. Um, she's Singaporean and based here in Singapore. And, and that really helped to ease communication. So even for myself and Cloud Bay or myself and clients in the future, like my Mandarin is going to be like not even possible, I guess, for business Chinese. And, and it really helps that somebody on the team understands and speaks the language in, I guess, communicating the ideas across effectively. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's one of the highly crucial areas for sure. Um, mm, and definitely a challenge. Okay. Yeah. And and you keep mentioning about the support, right? And I'm, I'm sure audience here want to hear about the juicy details, you know, like mm. in terms of support from Cloud Bay, right? What, what did you do to be able to get such, uh, you know, a support? <laughs> uh, wow, that's a really tough question. I would say it's the competition itself because if not, we would not have that conversation at all with, with Cloud Bay. Um, but I think it's really finding that, that, your idea, the, the startup, the idea that you want to bring into China, into Nanning, is gonna, it needs to be highly specific to the business itself. And I think we kind of like found that very nice sweet spot in 
you know, deploying our technology for whatever they were currently looking for. So there was a gap in what they're really looking for. And we kind of pitched it uh, very, very nicely kind of alongside with that. I, I can't speak for the other startups and the winners of the other, you know, of the, the, the this competition itself as well. But I think for us, like, um, and, and I, I would suggest that to whoever else is watching this, this webinar as well, but um, find what is it that your strength is in, find how that fits into the market that you are looking to go into, um, in this case, Nanning specifically, as well as the partners that are within this ecosystem. I think they have a great number of partners and I'm only speaking of Cloud Bay because that has been the greatest value that we got out of it. We have been matched with mentors, we've been speaking to other you know, companies that we got linked up with, but ultimately, like we cannot find the alignment with every company and every mentor. And I think for us, it was really that right fit that we pitched, you know, through the competition, um, through our conversations with Cloud Bay, that we found this like, you know, perfect kind of synergy between us. Yeah. That's really amazing. So, um, yeah, and, um, uh, we, I, I'm just curious, you know, like how have you grown personally as an individual or founder on this journey? Before you went into this travel full time, you were actually uh, building a business of entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial education for you, right, which you are still currently doing and did consulting work, work at VC, spoke, mentored, judge at different conferences. And I'm just curious to find out how was the journey you took from exposing yourself in working in different roles, putting different uh -huh. hats into starting your own travel startup business? Right. Um, I am what people would call an unwilling entrepreneur. <laughs> I, I, I myself would never have wanted to start my own business. And that's generally my advice even to youth entrepreneurs. Like, you know, they always have one takeaway, you know. What's one advice to young startups and entrepreneurs here in the, in the audience? I always say don't start something like... It's a really tough journey. I can't. I can't even say this. Like you know, uh, I can't even you know try to describe how difficult it is. Um, but very much so. I think it, you really need to find that passion and in, in what you're doing. Um, travel and hospitality has always been an interest to me, and uh, China has always been. I would say a big scary you know black hole that I have never known about, um, and and wanted to explore. Um, unfortunately, you know, like you know, that has never been the, the, the unfortunately, unfortunately, that has never been the focus of my previous endeavors. My in reactor in uh, you know, my startup consulting world, like it's never been China as a market because maybe just nobody really knows how to get into it. Um, but travel and tourism, I think we start seeing that you know the huge bump in not just domestic tourism but international tourism of outbound tourists, Chinese and and inbound into China. I think we're we're starting to see that um, going forward as well. Um, people are starting to get more more interested in in China as a as a tourism uh, hub and, and uh, a destination. So so I think in that sense, like um, uh, I I have had experience in in Asia in in, in even like Israel or US, but. Um, China itself is an entirely new journey that for, for, for me personally. And I think even though I was there for a year in Beijing, you know, I was uh, being exposed to the market and I speak Mandarin, like that has never been, you know, the, I guess the deciding factor. And I, uh, yeah, this journey in terms of like, you know, setting up the entity there, this administrative legal, going there as a tourist and going there as a student and going there, you know, setting up a business is going to be entirely different, right? So. Um, yeah, I mean, the business culture, the business practices, you know, and how hungry it is, uh, how much tenacity some of these Chinese um, uh, uh, people based there and, and startups there have. I think that's definitely a journey and very eye-opening for me. Um, yeah, China as a market is something that, that we would really want to kind of hopefully enter more effectively. So um, I, I saw in the previous poll, a few of them wanted to scale their businesses as well. If China is your market that you want to scale into, I think um, be prepared for a whole lot of pain. <laughs> but at the same time, if you do it well, you do it right. I think there's going to be a lot of channels that can help ease this uh, pain, this this difficulty, these challenges, like joining competitions like China ASEAN Startup a competition or even like, you know, getting right, linked to the right partners. And then once you're in it, I think, you know, how you scale it is yeah, 9.5 9 million people is just, you know, it's just chump change for them. That's like, oh, you know, we don't have that many people using our mobile application. We have about 9.5 million active users. <laughs> yeah. Exciting. Um, mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm just like, cons um, I mean, through our conversations, I just find so much, you know, hope. 
uh, and inspirations to venture into, you know, thriving market like China, because I think many of us, especially entrepreneurs, are kind of like worried because of COVID, everything is locked, uh, you know, a lot of challenge, cha challenges that is that we all face because of COVID. And I think, mm. uh, you know, just through this conversation itself with you, um, I believe that many of us find uh, a hope and inspirations to really venture into a thriving market like China. And um, yeah, and we are just so proud of you, Yen. And, um, <laughs> You know, I'm sure I'm sure that many of us are inspired by Yen's journey, and I just wanted to say uh, say on behalf of the committee a big thank you for your sharing of your experience as well and insight with us, and it's okay. definitely valuable for many of us as well. And um, yeah, I want to encourage everyone as well. If you have any questions for Yen, uh, just drop your questions in the Q and A box, and we will definitely address that in the Q and A session at the later part. All right, and without further ado, I will pass uh, the session to Ben to introduce the next segments. All right, okay. thank you, Ben. Thank you so thank much, you, uh, Ratna. And Yen, of course, yeah, you can take a short breather as well. If there were three things that I taken away from the session, uh, very, very, very well moderated by Ratna, I'm sure you would agree, as well as uh, very generously shared by Yen. If you enjoyed this conversation, please type in the chat box, you know, did you like it? You enjoyed it? What was your takeaway? Let us know because I think that's all about like uh, making sure that this whole conversation serves you as well. Uh, like I mentioned, I took away three things, like one, 9.5 million active users, right? It's something that, you know, being in Singapore, this is something that we cannot even like phantom because it's, it's literally not possible, right? You, you need every single person on this island to be literally active, which is, you know, we all know, uh, unless unless it's like what SingPass app, no, even SingPass, I don't think they have like, you know, 100% user activation. Uh, the second I, the second thing I thought uh, I, I took away was, oh, it's really, really painful. Uh, but of course, the pain can be alleviated. The pain can be mitigated with the right platform, right mentorship. Uh, last but not least, maybe we can like, tickle Yen a bit. Uh, I love to hear his Mandarin uh, in a Beijing accent, right? And maybe you can hold that to the Q&A section and of course, gives you a reason to of course, stay with us. On top of that, because of uh, the Q&A segment, we also see a lot of questions that's being populated. Uh, we'd love for you to really drop in your queries, your, your burning thoughts. And of course, we'll take our best shot at helping you uh, to be having a lot more clarity in this path. Now, up next, uh, of course, uh, gives me great pleasure to invite Mr. Caleb Lau. He's our organizing chairperson, the man behind this entire competition. I think uh, just a couple of years back, he was really instrumental in terms of bringing in this entire concept into ASEAN. And you may be wondering why China ASEAN, right? Like why would China take interest in ASEAN and why ASEAN should scale into China, right? You may have a lot of questions and how uh, the advent and genesis of this competition led to, you know, us doing all these pitch clinics to help you grow your business. So I shan't steal the thunder. I would even dare to. So I'll pass the time to Caleb. Caleb, please. All right. Thank you, Benjamin Lowe. Appreciate the, the little shout out. Uh, definitely an honor. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Caleb and I'm the organizing chair for the China ASEAN New Smart City uh, Startup Competition. Uh, firstly, I want to give a big thank you to Ian Lowe. Uh, Ian, uh, thank you very much. I just realized that while during your segment, Ian, uh, you're quite a superstar. There's actually one participant uh, in our audience today uh, by the name of Tony. He actually knows you. Uh, he said he's seen you pitch for, for your company travel in some NUS uh, pitch fest uh, a few years back, you know, um, and and apparently he says he's going to reach out to you. Um, so and he's also participating in this year's competition. So Ian, um, yeah, like your your name is definitely uh, definitely there, right? So so today we're going to share with you a little bit about. No, I brought in uh, Ian to share about how he moved from from a regional business to to penetrating the, the very competitive China market in just less than six months. You know, Ian represents. The, the, the typical founder in ASEAN today, right? Uh, one year ago, we were hit by COVID really badly, right? Singapore went to lockdown, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, and all the 10 ASEAN countries went to full lockdown at around the same time. And during the, the, the April to August period, many, many startup founders were pretty lost. And just fast forward, one year later, right here today, you know, we are seeing things like how Indonesia is now the epicenter of the pandemic uh, just overnight. Uh, we're seeing how last night Malaysia hit record numbers uh, just like that. Singapore, we were just seeing hope, but now we're back to a mini, uh, a mini sub, um, a, a micro lockdown of some sorts back again. And even in Singapore, the morale has seemed to drop 
it's, it's pretty low right right now I'll to be honest with you you know and Ian represents a very good um uh, what do you call it, uh, avatar for, for many of us today, because one year ago, his business was thriving, right? He, he had a thriving travel business, but because of the pandemic, things went to a halt, right? And I think I'm seeing very similar uh, scenarios today. And we see many startup founders uh, going, okay, should I wait till the, the economy picks up before I continue? We are seeing many startup founders say, okay, we need to double up on our marketing efforts. Uh, we are seeing many startup founders say that, okay, should we come up with new ideas, new products? Um, to meet the, the needs of our region today. Well, sometimes when it comes to, to crisis like we are today, it is not so much about being more creative, uh, being stronger in your marketing, or, or having to just double up your, your efforts. Sometimes it's about understanding which market is open right now and ready to embrace our idea and finding a way to get into that market. One year ago, Ian did exactly that. And today I'm going to share with you how many of you today could be achieving the exact same thing. Okay. In the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to type it in the in the in the Q and A um, on the bottom right of your screen so that we can address them uh, head on. All right. And after my segment, Benjamin Lowe will give you certain tips, pitching tips, um, that allow Ian and a few other startups to stand out um, in the China market. Right. So Ian mentioned a few things earlier on. This thing called Nanning Guangxi, uh, Cloud Bay. Well, today I'm going to share, just review a little bit more about these entities and how to tap on a platform to accelerate your, your journey into a market that is really up and running uh, for you to, to enter and scale. Right. So I'm just going to do a little share screen here. Okay, so over here, we have this thing we call the town of Nanning, um, Guangxi, which is based on Google Maps. It's a very small city in comparison to the greater China. If you notice the, the location of uh, Nanning over here, it's actually right at the doorstep you know, of the rest of ASEAN. Right? And that means one thing. Okay? Um, it's going to be a very significant region in the Belt and Road Initiative that China is pushing very hard for is the way they're going to connect economically to ASEAN, to Europe, to North America, so on and so forth, right? And the city of Nanning, its role, it will be the economic gateway between China and ASEAN. That's been designated uh, by the China government to fulfill this specific role. So if you look at this uh, map over here, you see the Nanning um, right at the peak, right at the edge of ASEAN. Um, and you see this little legend here. Right. So ASEAN is going to be a proposed economic corridor right, for, between China and, and ASEAN. So because of, of, of all these grand plans that China has in mind, okay, China in their policy, they've actually designated Nanning as a special economic zone or an SEZ. Now for those of you who may not be familiar with an SEZ, uh, SEZ started to appear uh, when China began to open up their economy to the rest of the world. So for example, in 1984 or 1982, uh, the first SEZs were your Shanghai, Beijing, Shenzhen, so on and so forth. And look where, where they are today. They are tier one cities. They are the economic hubs of China right now. They are tier one cities. So as an SEZ in China, Nanning currently is granted a lot of free market oriented economic policies and they are very and the government is very flexible um, in the in the policies there compared to the rest of china's uh, this allows each city uh, to grow faster and to attract foreign businesses right and the platform to allow businesses in to china into nanning is through this platform which is the china asia new smart city innovation and entrepreneurship competition of which my team and i are organizing the asean division Okay, of this competition. Now, this platform is very simple. We have only one goal. Our goal is to bring the best smart city ideas and innovations across ASEAN and offer them direct and fast track opportunities into a highly competitive China market. So who are the brains behind this uh, competition? Because I'm only overseeing the ASEAN side. Well, this competition is organized by the Nanning Guangxi government themselves, uh, also co-organized by China Mobile, Huawei, and a name you've heard pretty often, Cloud Bay. So Cloud Bay is significant as that it is a subsidiary of the Alibaba Group, and its role in Nanning is to drive the smart city initiatives in the entire Nanning city. Initiatives that are successful will then be rolled out across the rest of China. That is what this company, Cloud Bay, um, their role in Nanning is. 
So to support the ASEAN side, my company To Be Compass is, is fronting it, but we're also co-supported by amazing partners like Scape Singapore, a statutory board uh, in, in Singapore. We have the Singapore University of Social Sciences, and we also have Chilongkorn University, which is the, the number one, the first and number one uh, university in Thailand, right? So we are true to our, mot our motto, which is to bring, intentionally bring China, uh, bring startups across ASEAN into China. So since 2019, we've had 209 proposals submitted, of which we have generated 28 grand finalists, and five of them have successfully entered into China because they were a right fit, they met the market needs, and the, the founders showed uh, a certain grit to want to succeed in that market. So just uh, last year alone, we had four of our grand finalists penetrating to the market. We had Jeremy, Bell Bay, uh, many of you have heard about Ian Lo today, and Prof Pietro from, from Thailand. So a little bit of background, okay, uh, about the city of Nanning. Now, once a year, uh, there's this event called the Annual China ASEAN Expo, and this is the biggest event held in Nanning City. Uh, President Xi Jinping will be attending it, uh, and foreign dignitaries are also invited to attend this Expo. It is a way of building a China ASEAN relationship, and I was fortunate enough to be invited as a VIP in the 2018 edition. Now, this competition that I'm sharing with you today, it's, a, it's one of those activity build-ups to the China ASEAN Expo, right? Um, and just a year later, after 2018, in 2019, I was invited to be a judge at the semi-finals of the ASEAN division of this competition. Right, and also coach the teams for the grand finals in Nanning City. Right, this grand finals in Nanning City itself was streamed live in a studio to 15 million people. Right, so Ian was talking about how the iNanning app has a uh, 9.5 million users. Well, this grand finals was streamed to 15 million people. Talk about visibility and skill, isn't it? Uh, I mean, from coming from a tiny island of Singapore, of which we have five or six million people max. These are numbers that are beyond my, my beyond many of our imaginations right and just a year later in 2020 uh, my company was chosen to be the event organizer of the ASEAN division and this year my team has been reappointed to to facilitate um, ASEAN setups into China as well so a little bit about this competition a quick timeline we are currently in the project registration and submissions uh, faith and our deadline for for registration is the 2nd of august which is next monday in exactly seven days uh eight days time rather All right so monday 12 p.m 2nd august that is the date where where uh, the registration uh officially closes once this happens my team and i will review all the submissions we will look through all the pitch all the pitch decks all the uh, pitch recordings and we will choose the top 32 teams to qualify for the virtual pre preliminaries uh, ASEAN. And this will be held virtually uh, via, um, and we stream live on Facebook, YouTube, and, and even LinkedIn as well. And from this 32 teams, we will find the top 16 grand finalists to be part of the virtual grand finals in Nanning. And teams will qualify for this uh, virtual grand finals, stand a chance to be like Ian, Bell, Jeremy of Prof Pietro to venture into China and see more possibilities happening from there. Okay, so in the meantime, if any questions, just keep uh, just uh, populate it into the Q and A, and we'll address it uh, in very very shortly. So a little bit about this competition. Okay, um, there are, we have two categories: the startups category and the comprehensive category. Some of you may be asking, "Hey, Caleb, which category best suits me?" Well, in a nutshell, the startup category best suits uh, students or teams who are at early stage of their startups. So they probably have an idea uh, and not, not really yet into validation, definite, definitely no MVP yet, okay, but just have an idea and you want to share this idea and see what goes on with it. Well, if that's you, then the startup category is the best fit for you. But for, for Businesses like Ian's, where he was already profit making, he has done some level of market validation. Uh, that there is, um, there, there's, he's already uh, seeing revenue coming in. He has an MVP. Uh, for startups like him, and they are ready to scale, the comprehensive category will be the suitable look, the suitable category for you. And just a one, one quick thing to note that projects should be relevant to the smart city landscape in China. All right, so this competition is organized by the Nanning government. So we, we want to make sure that as we pitch to them, 
they, they realize that we understand their needs to, to some extent. Okay, and my colleague Benjamin Lowe later will be sharing with you some ways to ensure your pitch becomes has some relevancy to China. Right, so we have a few uh, support systems to ensure that all our teams are, are well supported from now during the submission stage all the way to the preparation to the grand finals. In fact, we got in a few uh, messages from our current registrants saying that they've never felt so supported in any startup competition that they have joined so far. That is our commitment uh, to you to facilitate you in this pretty arduous journey. Okay, So for those of you who sign up, uh, to register your interest, you will receive a power pitch preparation package of which that will give you all the details and information you need to have a, a pretty good product to, to show forth at the preliminary round. Okay. Secondly, we also run uh, clinic sessions like one right now where we share with you a pitch workshop, we give an overview, we bring in past uh, participants like what Ian did to give you an insight what to expect and how you might need to prepare for this competition. Uh, for those to prepare people for the for the preliminary round for the 32 teams, we got a virtual training by Singapore's top trainers in, in, in stage planning, in pitching, in uh, PR, so that you don't just uh, represent your country, but you represent the region as well. How do you get visibility to the correct uh, magazines, news, news agencies for, to get your, your your idea uh, to the in front of the right uh, eyeballs, right? And lastly, we have personalized coaching by our by elite mentors, and these elite mentors have been carefully selected because of the understanding of the re regional startup scene, venturing as well as venturing into China as well. Uh, on top of that, and this is not here, we have invited a China a Chinese consultant based in China, uh, and he will be giving a, a very in depth talk to all our grand finalists. Uh, on how to best prepare for the China market. And we also have made sure that he'll be one of our judges at the prelim preliminary round. This way, as he talks to our grand finalists, he can give better context, give better advice to our grand finalists so that they can, uh, they can revamp their pitch, enhance it to stand out in front of the Chinese audience. Right? So this is our, the, the length of which we are going to, to ensure that all teams who are ready to go into China uh, you, you, we do not miss any single step. So there are just some very simple ways uh, to thrive in this competition. And my colleague Ben will dive even deeper uh, for all of you who wants to go far and beyond. Okay, so uh, just some basic administratives. You know, uh, as you submit your pitch deck and pitch recording, ensure that your pitch deck and recording are professional and contextualized specifically for this competition. You know, uh, last year we had uh, we received uh, pitches that was merely a company um, a company corporate video, right? Um, and that does not fly at this level of the game. Uh, some of you also, some of them also submitted a pitch recording of them presenting at a different competition, right? Of which it didn't really look good. So these are the types of, of, of pitch recordings that even if you have a good product, we will, we will not accept you, All right? So ensure that you have a professional pitch deck and you record a brand new video pitch recording specifically for this competition. And in your pitch recording, do ensure that uh, your slides and the presenter's face are visible so that when the judges see it, they can, they can witness your expressions, your liveliness, and your energy as well. Secondly, it's very important to display strong confidence to succeed with a humility to learn as well. Now, uh, that's the reason why, because the grand in the grand finals in Nanning, the judges are industry leaders in China's top MNCs. They handle hundreds of millions to billions of dollars of revenue every single year. So when it comes to seeing your numbers, your, your, your logic, uh, your, the way you deduce your marketing plan, they can strip it down very easily. So as much as it's important to show strong confidence, there should be a certain level of humility in order for you to stand out in their eyes. So a little bit about the competition benefit. Yes, um, we are still a regular competition and there is prize money to be won as well. So there is a total of 320,000 RMB in cash prizes to be won in total. And there's also priority investment funds, venture capital institutions for the winning projects. However, this is just what I call a very small side benefit because the real benefit is gonna be for those who want to scale into a market that is thriving in today's crisis. 
right? And these are just some of the things that the Nanning government, as well as Cloud Bay, have prepared for, for winning teams with the right project for the right market there. So for example, uh, credit rise compensation funds, there are support funds for entrepreneurs, uh, very good bank loans, uh, interest or loan interest discounts specifically for ASEAN uh, projects. Uh, there'll be priority access to the China ASEAN Smart City Innovation Center. This is a brand new state-of-the-art incubation accelerator building uh, specifically for people like, like you, right? But even for the more, um, for the more uh, practical needs, rent reduction, supporting services, patent applications, very important, uh, innovation resources, these are all available to you because especially when you're on new setup into a new city, cash flow is very important. Having rent reduction and a few of these supporting services provided for you, definitely if you would agree with me, does support and does help to reduce the stress and to put more efforts into breaking into a brand new market. And then last but not least, there's also opportunities for, for some of you to potentially showcase at professional exhibitions and get new eyeballs. Uh, one of our grand finalists, Jeremy Ma last year, he only had an idea uh, before this competition. Today, he has a sustainable uh, cross-regional China ASEAN business, and he managed to collaborate with um, Alibaba's Timo. They ran a, and it was one of uh, China's largest e-commerce uh, festivals um, in China, and he was collaborated with Alibaba's Timor to be part of that professional exhibition showcase. Right, so these are just some of the, the benefits of, of joining this competition. It's intentional for one purpose, to get you into China if the project is the right fit, if the founder is a right fit as well. So for those of you who are curious to find out more, or maybe something to wonder, okay, how do I join this competition? Well, uh, you can join in this um, manner. And my colleague, Daryl, he'll be copy and pasting the, the, the link to register in the chat group right now. So you either scan this QR code or go to www.chinaasianstartup.com. This way you have all the information that you need to join this competition. Okay, as you click on this link, as you scroll all the way down, you will come across this, uh, this uh, what do you call it, the, the registration fields, right? So make sure you key in every single um, field and register your interest. Once you register your interest, you receive an email for, for us and you'll be, and my team will, will reach out to you personally to follow up such that your submission process, submission of your pitch deck, your, your, your pitch recording, uh, it'll be up to scratch it'll, and it'll be within on time. So make sure that you submit the following documents by the 2nd of August, okay? Uh, not, um, well, the deadline is 12 p.m. GMT plus eight, which is 12 p.m. Singapore time or 11 a.m. if you're in Thailand, right? So I just want to leave off one, one last code right now as you get ready to scan the QR code. Uh, there's a quote by Sun Tzu, the, the a China philosopher and the author of The Art of War. And that is in the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. Now today we can all agree that ASEAN is not facing the easiest of times and a huge market, the startup market, is definitely facing certain barriers that we are definitely not used to. However, what Ian did was that he took the jump, he wanted to scale and he took the, he saw this opportunity that was ready for his business and I want to encourage all of you who want to get out of this crisis today and, and find a market that wants to accept you, this could be the platform that could allow your business to scale even in the midst of the pandemic. My team and I are ready to help you. If, and if you're ready to join us in this journey, we welcome you to scan the QR code and to submit your registration of interest. My team will reach out to you ASAP and get your journey started right away, okay? Uh, with that, thank you very much. I'd like to hand over the time back to my colleague, Benjamin Lowe, and he'll be giving you, you tips and tricks on how to angle your pitch so that it stands out to the China market. Last year, uh, four teams followed his advice um, and, and look where they are today. And he'll be sharing with you the same advice he gave them then, uh, right here and right now. So shall we just welcome Ben back once again? Ben, thank you very much for sharing your knowledge in advance. Over to you. Okay, thank you so much, Caleb, as well. I think, you know, it's like uh, passing the airways and, and of course the invisible microphone from person to person. But I trust that if you've been joining with us for the past one hour or so, you've 
gotten so much inspiration, insight, as well as valuable. Uh, well, I would I would love to use this term, you know, in terms of like a, a mental jobs. Um, chances are you came into this uh, and invested this one to one and a half hours today with us uh, because you may have an idea or you may have a ready business, but you're not too sure what to do next. How do you grow a business, especially out and within into China? So today, my job is to give you a bit more clarity. Um, I, I want to lead you through to, well, we call this a pitch clinic workshop, but it's really, really a, a very diluted and I would say it's a quick 10 to 15 minutes deep dive into what we may be looking out for. Uh, if you've been listening to what Caleb has mentioned, the key aspects of this workshop, in fact, this whole competition, it is run, organized and funded by the China government. So there are certain, I would say, nuances as well as certain focuses that we like you to bear at heart so that you would be able to maximize your winning potential for this competition. So allow me to just briefly lead you through some of the very important aspects because this is the first phase. In fact, as soon as you join and put in your interest, you'll be tagged uh, via WhatsApp to one of the committee members and you have a direct line of contact whereby you have personalized support, any questions that you may have, uh, resources to our past um, pitch videos, um, presentation decks as well, all of these are made available to you. After which, you know, our, uh, our semi-finalists would also go through two separate workshops. In fact, one, one workshop at their separate level uh, to prepare you for the, 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 the uh, virtual preliminaries. After that, you know, I had a question from the uh, anonymous attendee who are the elite mentors. Well, we'll be sharing with you uh, in, in a due moment's time. So please hang on for that. For those of you who have also raised up your hand, we'll welcome you to either put your questions in the Q&A box or if you have a comment to share, please use the um, chat box function. So as you will be aware of, as soon as you put in your interest for this competition, you'll be introduced to a deck as well as a bank of resources. One of this very, very important resource is a registration info kit. And this has been very, very um, well put together. It contains close to 30 pages, uh, anything in terms of, for example, uh, insights into China. What is the Guangxi region? Giving you a bit of like a background context. So we'd love for you to do a bit of due diligence as well as homework to understand which is the terrain and the field you're stepping into. So for example, Yen had the advantage as well as the privilege of, you know, exploring China through his NOC experience studying in Tsinghua. But not all of us would have the kind of opportunity or privilege to do so. So use this kit as a highlight and insight. Inside this kit as well, there are very, uh, there are important resources in terms of the judging criteria, as well as some very um, essential resources in terms of how do you pitch design, uh, your pitch deck as well. So all of these resources come from a pool of experiences from Caleb, from Ratna, from Andrew, uh, as well as myself, you know, I've been in the, in the scene coaching as well as supporting startups from Japan as well as Europe to scale their businesses across regions. Now, if you take a look at the project plan, there's actually two sets of criteria. Once you join us, that will be very, very important for you to take note of. The first set, which is what you're looking at, uh, pardon me, the, the font size may be a bit small, but I'll be going through in terms of the micro detail, uh, a set of five criteria. So let's face it, we are in a competition. There needs to be an objective way of assessing whether uh, your competition, your, your, your startup, your idea meets the mark or not. And how our judges will be doing so is really being very, very objective and clear in terms of relying on this set of very, very strict as well as well-worded criteria so that you know, your, your idea can be put in front of a large audience. So as you heard from Caleb, last year's audience, um, it, it was close to what, 15 million, if I, I got the numbers correct. And the key thing here you should be asking yourself with your idea or your ready business in mind is how do I find a strategy that can be of high relevance to the China market? So again, this is not a Singapore hosted competition. This is not hosted by the Malaysian government. This is hosted by the China government. So obviously uh, we want ideas that can be uh, exported, in fact, grown and sprouting in the China market. So the first criteria is in terms of the innovation and creativity. So I've highlighted key criteria or the key words in red. So you'll see that, for example, it needs to meet the development needs of the China smart city industry. So obviously it's not so much in, in terms of the, I would say the sunset industry. So it's not so much about like, for example, trying to revitalize certain industry that may have been neglected. So when you think of smart city, obviously you would start to um, have this kind of like um, 
terms in mind, for example, big data in terms of leverage, in terms of skill, in terms of helping people live their lives better. So all of this will um, have a certain repercussion in terms of how are you problem solving and how are you meeting the local market needs as well. So we are looking for ideas that are original, creative, as well as you know they have a certain bonus uh, that, that, that meets uh, in, in terms of how the idea is being designed or delivered. So some quick tips, which are the, the pointers you see in the blue box below. Uh, in the learning resource guide, which is offered to all registered participants. So if you haven't registered, you know, I do not know what you're waiting for. Please join us and, and at least put your best foot forward so that you have a chance at shining uh, in this global stage. Secondly, I would, if I'm you, uh, try to do very, very preliminary research, whether in the Baidu, which is the uh, equivalent of Google in China, in terms of the uh, equivalent or comparable solutions that uh, you, 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 you're trying to sort of put off into China. The third thing would be you want to display certain understanding and as well as awareness of market nuances. Now to help you out, um, this is one of the excellent resource that I found as well as I've read, it's uh, by the Harvard Business Review. And it's actually a four part series where it's titled, the, the big title is what the West gets wrong about China. And I find it particularly enlightening as well as illuminating because, you know, for, you know, although I'm not from the West, but I do have certain misconceptions or myths about China and Chinese. So if you are still at a very, very nascent stage of understanding about China, this is an excellent resource. If your time crunch, uh, I'll highlight the part three as well as part four, which is China's new innovation advantage, as well as what Americans do not know how capitalist China is. So it's very uh, insightful in terms of the cultural, the commercial aspects of things. Moving into the pitch deck, this is why I want to share with you. Uh, usually, if you've studied how pitches are being designed and engineered to get the maximum and optimal impact, there is always a very, very tight and coherent structure. You usually talk about why are you running this business or why are you mooting this idea? How are you going to solve things? Who is working on this? And what's the vision that you want to sort of construct or lead your company or your idea into? Now, if you take a look at the, 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 the slope that's... Um, moving upwards, we need you to contextualize all of this within China. So it means that, for example, you shouldn't be just talking about the problem that exists in Cambodia, in Thailand, in Singapore, or in Malaysia. Well, as a start, yes, maybe. But you want to talk about how these problems and how these problems look like in China, right? Are there any certain comparable uh, or, or parallels that we should be looking at, we should be considering? Uh, how does this problem look like? in a third tier city versus a first tier city. So you need to show to the judges that you've done your homework and hence definitely what Kayla has mentioned, uh, your past corporate videos, your past pitching videos, unless you, you've had some ways of like, you know, communicating in a very specific China context, usually in our experience, you know, this past corporate videos uh, will not be adequate to put a very, very strong case for your idea. Now, moving to the second part, which is public service, uh, obviously being funded by the China government. We want this idea not to just be doing well, but it also needs to do good and do good for the China market, the China people as well. So it needs to be aligned to the China smart city development layout, as well as you will be very, very well advised to talk about the role of big data, as well as how it helps to construct smart cities. Uh, again, the ideas as well as suggestions are in the blue box below. If I were you, China has been very, very progressive. Uh, a quick share, you know, I've been in China in 2019. I was in Hangzhou uh, studying in the Alibaba Business School. I was really, really fascinated at the pace as well as the progression within China itself. And one of the things that you should know is that China works in terms of realizing and materializing plans. And what's the very important plans for, for, for people in China, as well as the, um, the central government, it's the Unian Jihua, which is really China's five years plan. They plan very, very meticulously and they execute surgically. They execute very, very judiciously and to make sure that ideas go into reality. So what does this mean for you? If you're planning an idea or startup, make sure there's a bit of alignment or at least a bit of mansion so that you know what is the landscape and what you're talking about. You want to study how the big giants, the Baidu, the Alibaba, the Tencent, or even the Meidu Tianping is uh, using data uh, in a very comparative fashion so that you understand the local nuances. You want to understand what are the existing initiatives that are in play vis-a-vis uh, -vis the verticals that you're invested in. So just to give you a bit of a taste and highlight, uh, this is just a very, very simple infographic, but if you spend the time to understand uh, which is the vertical or the plan focus that 
pertains to your idea or pertains to your business, uh, this is your homework and this is part of the work that even our mentors will be supporting you down the road as well. So uh, this is pretty self-explanatory. If you are working in terms of uh, anything that's green tech, green related, uh, for example, last year we had uh, you know ideas that were very brilliant in terms of uh, transforming garbage trash into uh, something that's more useful. Obviously, you'll dive deep into uh, vertical number six and you know, you're gonna study a bit about what has been done and what are the existing gaps and pain. Now, the I would say the last part is in terms of marketing strategy. We want you to really fly and be successful. In so far, there are a lot of, um, by the way, introductions. There's a lot of open doors that you will be given, even only if you're a winner, of course. Uh, we want you to be also very, very grounded. And what does being grounded really mean? Because if you want to grow in China, you need to really, for example, be aware of how China marketing is being done. Uh, are you a B2B business? Are you a B2C business? Are you a B2G business? And with each one and, and the differentiation of your business, it will have uh, hence a certain impact in terms of how you tend to grow your business within China. So again, marketing strategy is about understanding um, how ideas are being transmitted within China how do consumers or decision makers make their decisions within China and how the best, what are some best ways to transport as well as communicate ideas in the China context. So these are the three big uh, focuses of the judging criteria that I want to lead you all through so that at least with the benefit of attending today's lunchtime clinic, you can put in your best application. But even that, you know, I want to say that support is constantly provided as soon as you put in your application. Uh, we do have online Google Classroom learning with the plethora of topics you see on the screen. Uh, after which we have established elite mentors. Uh, just to give you an insight, they are either past entrepreneurs, VCs, as well as people who are specialists within China. They brought businesses into within China and they are very, very grounded in that approach. And last but not least, the committee uh, is always behind you because uh, we believe that, you know, if you're able to join this competition as well as qualify and eventually win, you're the pride, not just of the city or your country, but also the pride of ASEAN. So it brings us a lot of joy as well as a lot of importance to make sure that you do fly. So all that said and done, um, this is the last of the four clinics. We do not have any more clinics, but if you are here with us, we want to make sure that we see your name, your competition, your idea by next Monday at 12 p.m. So that is all I have for my very, very, I would say, hopefully a helpful deep dive so that you have a clarity as well as perspectives of what it takes to win in our competition. So now I'm going to bring all our folks, good folks back for a final 10 minutes of Q&A. We have Caleb, Yin. Uh, Yin, are you there? I hope you're there. Uh, hopefully the jab has not taken you out. Okay. So maybe this time, you know, we'll pass it to Ratna. But Yin, if you can indulge in my curiosity, can you say something in a Beijing accent? I'm just very, very curious. Say how are you feeling today in a Beijing accent? Uh, how how are you feeling today? Why well, you're really putting my my Mandarin on a spot? Exactly right. Uh, so we're gonna see like you know, what does mastery of China looks like or something. Like. Yeah, I understand. I was in Beijing like almost six years ago already, seven All years right. ago. Already. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. But yeah, uh, that that's, that's gonna be a tall order for me to revert back to Chinese. Maybe you should get Ratna to try. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, if if we have an opportunity, I believe we will be very very fascinated as well as interested to learn from Yin. I again, you know, should keep quiet because more, uh, Ratna will be moderating our final Q and A uh, with regards to the questions that are sprouting out in the Q and A segment. Ratna, over to you. All right. Thank you so much, Ben. And yeah, today we have a very engaged audience, so we have a pretty uh, a few questions here. So I wanted to address the first question um, from Ethan. It seems like China is a very competitive space with tremendous talent as well. What do you think is one advantage we in Singapore have versus China? Uh, maybe Yen, would you like to address that? Yeah, I, I think definitely. I can only speak for my industry uh, and my, my company. I think that's what every each and every one of you are supposed to figure that out so that you can pitch during your start China's ASEAN startup competition. Um, but for us specifically, like I think because we serve international tourists, so as you know, like you know, Cloud Bay and even like Alibaba in, in China already has a fully self-automated um, hospitality systems for the hotels. And it's really been deployed almost like a few hundred or close to a thousand of these hotels in, in Hangzhou and in the region. Um, I think where we kind of we really came into play was because 
we realized that their, their systems that they have built um, by Alibaba is very much focused for domestic um, tourism. And our strength um, for travel is really in international inbound. So we really want to help to you know, serve this inbound tourists a lot more effectively through conversations, through guest engagement for the, the travel and hospitality space. And I think that's where we also kind of want to see ourselves position. Hopefully one day we get acquired by Alibaba, um, but you know, you know, then I will, I will really be the success case of this startup competition. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, definitely that you have to find your own sweet spot and your advantage that you have. And, and I think for us, it's really serving international inbound tourists. And that will be the focus of China going forward for tourism. Um, domestic is always the big key and the big market that is already being served very well there now. All right. Thank you so much, Yen. Maybe Ben, would you like to add on into this, uh, you know, if you, yeah. If you can add on on your view as well. Yeah, I, I would try in my very limited lenses. I think uh, Yen definitely has a lot more on the ground experience. I mean, personally, I personally and professionally, I've done a fair bit of training within um, Hong Kong, Macau, and various parts of China as well. I, I think from a very limited talent perspective, what we can offer in Singapore are a few things. Uh, well, believe it or not, I think bilingualism is uh, has been our strong suit. So um, you want to showcase like how as a result of being educated in English as well as being exposed to uh, a lot of the things we see on a global scene and landscape has a repercussion on how you run business. So not just being bilingual, right? Being bilingual is just a, 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 a skill set or even just like a competency. But how as a result of you maybe running a business like what Ian has done, uh, the international side of things, uh, look, understanding how the, because what we, what we have on stick and on table here is we are trying to bring businesses into China but there are also businesses within China that's trying to go out of China as well. So what they may lack, uh, conversely, is what is the world outside of the Middle Kingdom uh, like? How, how does it look like to deal with the Europeans, the Americans as well? So if you have already a bit of successes, track records or work or experiences, I think that would be very, very much a plus point. I think secondly would be, again, the cultural and cultural awareness. Uh, if you've, like Yen, travel extensively, you've worked with in an MNC context, you work and, uh, and of course, dealt with uh, people from different nationalities, cultures, uh, ideologies, philosophies. I think that will be very, very much a plus point to highlight. So I think, again, from the past year's perspective, um, the judges were pretty impressed uh, with, with the, the candidates that we put forth for the finals. Uh, I think in large part, not just because the, the ideas were mature, but uh, let's face it, right? People or PCs, they don't just buy businesses, but buy the people. So if they see a candidate like Ian, you know, I'm sure they'd be very, very impressed because I think Ian is not just a very solid leader, but it's a very, very solid person as well. I do a good job, right? Like, like to promote you, Ian. Still waiting for your Mandarin, by the way. But never yeah, mind. Thanks, thanks, thanks. I think yeah, you oversaw a little bit, yeah. <laughs> yep, so that's from me, uh, Ratna. Thank you so much, Ben. Really appreciate that. All right, we have uh, the second questions from Edwin. Ian, on the hindsight, what would what would the most painful but valuable lessons learned for travel in your China quest? Ian? Yeah, well, even the participants are giving me tough questions. I thought it was just going to be right now. Um, <laughs> um, I, I, think, I think in terms of like painful, valuable, um, Okay, so I think I think travel industry in China is, is, is highly different. Um, I think actually it might not just be in China. We, we kind of face that in, in Japan and in Korea as well. Um, you want they want it to be uh, localized and, and, and be as much you know serving the, the local market as, as much as possible. And I think that has been something that I guess for the China point of view, like um, if you are doing a mobile application, if you are building platforms for the Chinese market, the user interface and the user experience is going to be very different. Um, I, I wouldn't say it's been painful, it's just been a lot more challenging. Um, and, and I think in trying to understand the needs, because um, for us here in Southeast Asia, and most of you here have been exposed to the mobile applications and platforms, I think we're still a bit more um, attuned to the, the Western side of the mobile applications. So we use WhatsApp and instead of a WeChat. But look at WeChat itself, there are so many functions that we kind of can leverage on. And, and I think in that same like same area that that becomes one of the key kind of like um, challenges that we face because adapting locally becomes a, a, a huge challenge in terms of understanding the user experience and um, we are lucky enough that that cloud bay has been helping us along that that path uh, mainly because they are in the market they are exposed to the market and they've built the i app so they know how their users use the platform 
and that kind of funnels down to us as very good insights that we can then kind of adapt our solution uh, to serve them better. Um, and in so doing, I guess also, you know, being able to help them for the outbound tourism eventually, uh, and also bringing our expertise for inbound tourism into China that what we have already learned from all the other cultures. Yeah. Okay, that's very interesting, Yen. Perhaps, uh, Caleb, would you like to add on into this? You know, I know that you have been traveling to China as well. I have been there uh, in the China Expo, as well as, you know, witnessing the whole entire co competitions, as well as uh, the startup scene there. Yeah, perhaps you can add on into this. Thank you. Uh, to add on to this, wow. Um, I think for me, one, one thing I, I, I realized um, in my time, I've, I think through my work with Cloud Bay, um, I've been to Nanning and to Guangzhou. Uh, for Guangzhou, I was invited to the Alibaba um, annual, annual convention, right? And we, we saw all the ideas, all the pictures there. And one thing I noticed about, the, about China is how industrious uh, and, how, and how committed they are to working really hard. Uh, how come they are to, 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 work, to, to working really hard? I think one thing I learned about if you want to, to succeed there, you know, it's about having the gumption to, you know, and I think Jack Ma has this thing, you, you have to work, the, is it the 888, you, you work, no, what was that? What's that? 996. 996, right? You work um, nine, nine hours, uh, nine hours, uh, and that, that closes my mind. I think Benjamin Lowe will be able to, to expand on that. But I think in essence, it's about, how do you sacrifice um, everything you have uh, just just to stand out in the in the competitive market space? And that seems to be the DNA. Um, when I when I went into the the N Financial and Cloud Bay office and I met the people there, you know, um, the way they spoke was so different, right? And the, the way they thought was so different. So I think it's about having the, the gumption to 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 put aside your own comfort in order to to thrive there. I, I think uh, Ian just from the way he talks, right? There's this there's a sense of fearlessness in the way he talks, right? There's a sense of, he's probably been, been scared his whole life, his entire life, but there's a sort of fearlessness right now, but just do it, uh, sacrifice of everything. And I think it's this spirit that I think allowed him to, to stand out, um, not just in terms of a good product, but uh, as the right character to, to bring in a skill into China as well. Yeah, yeah. I think over optimism and over confidence, I think that's what kind of label startups and entrepreneurs. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Caleb and Ben, uh, Caleb and Yan. So we have the next question from Ethan. Uh, where can we find out about the needs of Nanning City so that we can tune our pictures to be more re relevant for them? Um, Caleb, would you like to uh, answer this? Maybe Yan also can add on into some of the resources that they can find. Thank you. Mm. So for me, I'll probably let Ian uh, and maybe even Ben later share a little bit more about uh, are the, what are the right resources to understand the, the need. Although I don't think there'll be a, an article that tells you all the needs of Nanning laid out nicely in front of, of you. Uh, so, but I'll definitely let Benjamin and Ian uh, to their own to their expertise in, in the startup world uh, to, to expand on that. But for me, what I'll focus on is what happens in a competition. So I'm not sure, Ian, whether you recall, um, after the preliminary round and in the preparation to the grand finals, do you recall how um, every grand finalist had a one-to-one -one time with a senior advisor of the Alibaba group? And do you recall what happened? He literally ripped apart everybody's uh, idea. He brought it to trash. Uh, he, he, turned you, he turned everyone emotionally upside down and produced a gold nugget out, out of there. Right. Um, and I think that, that's a beauty because I think the, the people that we bring in, uh, we're not looking for a, the complete finished product. Right. Um, if it will, and the reality is that China is that way more advanced than many of us. But I can share with you this that regardless of how you plan out your, your pitch, understanding the needs of the market, what Cloud Bay, the judges, what they're looking for is they are trying to look at not your product, but functions of your product. And how a particular function could be very useful in a certain ecosystem or to serve a, a different need that they know is more pressing and they will guide you to what's there. So actually a lot of Ian's ideas may not have been so much of, okay, I'm travel, I've done this in regionally in Singapore and ASEAN, let me re replicate the same in China. But he was guided to focus on something that was special in his product 
and use that to expand into China. So this is just part of the whole uh, evolutionary process that we bring our, our, our participants into, especially for those who go into the grand finals. I mean, Ian, if you correct me if I'm wrong, but that was, uh, yeah, I saw every team <laughs> go through that process. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think definitely like we, we were connected with like the, the teams and, and just different members that we were speaking to right across the whole competition. I think once you sign up on that link that Ben um, shared just now, um, you will start getting like emails from, I, I think it was Ratna was sending me emails at the time like, oh, okay, connected to this person, go on this webinar, you know, listen in on this. And I think that's where the value really is for, for us. Um, we have been in multiple countries already previous prior to, to, to China. Um, like I was mentioning Japan and Korea and every market is going to be different, right? So um, we were sharing pretty much a very generic deck for our, I think for our first round. And like, obviously we got torn apart because like whatever information we can find, like, so like I would suggest just go by two, you know, if you don't speak Mandarin, go and search it up and then auto translate that and then you find as much information as you can about Nanning and about China. So I think it's not just Nanning City, but how you can get out of, you know, Nanning City as a, a base and then getting into China and the market. Um, how you structure that and and you're gonna find a limited amount of information right because we are just limited in our Chinese search and um, Speak to more of the mentors, you know get all these insights, you know try to understand, you know Does this make sense here? Does this not make sense here? How much localization do I need and that will be eventually your, your final pitch, right? Um, and, and I think in through the entire process even now like the final pitch wasn't really exactly what we are really rolling up now as well because it is constantly changing it is constantly improving and that's where the value of this you know conversations will really get you thank you thank you yen um yeah i'm i'm just wanted to bring i also like one um insight that i got from the previous um uh, webinar as well uh we i think shared by jeremy that sometimes you might not know uh, where is that like one unique unique propositions that you can actually find out just by changing like one function in whatever apps you have that can actually solve the problems of what is China is facing. Yeah, so just be curious to find out more about uh, what is it and what can your solutions can actually help to solve problems in China as well. Yeah, and uh, that brought to the last questions that we have. Uh, what are the names of the elite mentors? Uh, ben, would you like to uh, share a little bit more about the mentors profile? So at this point, I think uh, it's, it's got a good point if we review the names of the elite mentors, right? So we purposefully kept, I think, as a, as a suspense or, or at least something for you to look forward to. Uh, I, but I would say safe to say that they are all definitely industry experts. They are either current uh, founders of uh, enterprises that existed. They are running sizable businesses. Like I mentioned, they are either uh, in VC roles. Uh, they would have enough oversight, success, track record in terms of either running a business, helping to scale a business or moving businesses from region to region, especially within and into China. So again, the mentoring load is also carefully designed. So each mentor has only two companies. Uh, I mean, I've been a mentor in some other competitions whereby one mentor is being tagged to six or eight different kinds of um, startups as well. It's going to be attention is spread so thin like Gaia or Jam. Uh, but this way, you know, our mentors really have the kind of bandwidth to support you, handhold you, guide you to make sure that you shine uh, in front of China. So that's where really our intent, uh, our organizing committee is also making our best efforts to make sure that each and every part of the way, how can the user experience, how can the participant experience can be enhanced to be improved. So rest assured, again, the mentors are definitely uh, top of their game. Thank you so much, Ben. So, uh, yeah. Oh, we do have one more question here from Philip. Are we able to host our service behind the China firewall for services that connect Chinese and ASEAN population? Uh, great questions. Um, Yen, would you like to try this? Yeah, yeah I, I think I didn't share about like, I guess this is also, also one of the challenges for, for a technology company like ours. Um, so there, for us, because we are working with like some of the more government affiliated platforms, we do need to base our service in China. Um, but I think the Cloud Bay team has a lot of connections. We got connected to their server, like, you know, systems. Um, they help us reporting over. 
Um, my CTO is a British Polish guy with like blonde hair and all. So like Mandarin is obviously an issue, but like, you know, I think all the, the established server systems like Huawei or Alibaba already has their documentation in English. So I don't think that's so much of an issue. Um, obviously you, you probably need to take the effort to port over that information into the Chinese server to serve the Chinese population. Um, and I think we already see quite a lot of that, like, you know, in, internationally where everybody has different privacy policies and, and requirements. Um, yeah, so I, I, I can't speak for all services, but I think for us, because we are serving local Chinese um, and working with a government affiliated company, like that, that makes, like, I guess, a necessary uh, evil for us. Um, I think, yeah, also to jump on that names of elite mentors, I guess I'm not going to spoil the fun for the rest of you. Um, but I can tell you that it really, you know, the mentors might not even be within your industry. I mean, we were lucky that we had, I really name dropped a few like Eddie from Cloud Bay. But like, um, itself, it is sometimes just administrative. Sometimes, you know, how do we get in, you know, when we speak to like startups or companies that already entered China. And I think that in itself was value because, you know, that just some things are just generic in, 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 in yeah, you know. In, in just the help that and support that we get. So, yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Yan. Um, yeah, I think uh, if there are like, you know, some ideas that I can take away from Yan's journey as well as this conversation during the Q&A session as well, it will be the first one is do what you fear the most. The second one is find passion in what you're doing as well. And the third one is stay hungry. And if you are still like, you know, on the verge to really apply for this competition, um, go and apply. I think my colleague Daryl will uh, drop you a chat as well into the links that you can actually apply for this competition. And uh, yeah, last but not least, I just wanted to thank so much uh, Yen, Ben, as well as Keller for addressing all these questions. We really, truly really appreciate your time and sharing insights with everyone here. And with that, I would like to pass this to Ben to conclude the session today. I think with uh, whatever Ratna has mentioned, I do not have much things to, to conclude. Again, once once again, on behalf of the committee, thank you so much, Yen, for taking your Monday lunchtime, uh, recovering from the second jab of Pfizer. I hope the... Uh, you, you said that, you know, that, that has gotten into you. Clearly, it hasn't. Uh, I think you put on your best, your A game. And I think you really shared from your heart. You inspired us, obviously giving us with a good dose of truth as well. So I want to wrap this up by, again, sharing one of my favorite quotes from a Chinese entrepreneur. His name is Lei Jin. He founded Xiaomi. Uh, this, this, well, this quote has been used in a lot of like, the Chinese and uh, Chinese MBA circles. It says, uh, So what it really means is uh, if a pig is standing at the edges of the window with a heavy gust of wind, even a pig can fly. So what it really means is not nothing biological. It really means that uh, sometimes in life, we all we need is to be at the right place with a huge opportunity that's beneath us. And what we're trying to do here at the competition is nothing more than putting you at the right place so that with this win, it will take you, your idea, your people, and uplift and bring it in into China. So with that, uh, I hope all of you stay safe, stay well, but most importantly, stay committed like Ian. And hopefully, you know, we'll be hosting you for our next year's lunchtime chat to showcase as well as to highlight your success. Thank you so much, Ian, and to our committee members. Again, a lot of hard work. Thank you so much. Stay safe, stay well. Take care, and I'll see you soon again. Thank you to all participants as well.